What's going on everybody? I hope you're all having a wonderful day. I'm Jacob Davis here at Sally Speed Shop and it's officially time to pull the 350 and the transmission out of the C20 and finish getting this thing gutted so we can clean it up and get it ready for all the new parts. So that old 350 has started for the last time in this truck. Um, yeah, pretty much everything is gonna get stripped off except for probably the brake booster and master cylinder, just because I don't wanna have to deal with bleeding brakes at the end of this whole project. But we're also gonna remove this door and I'm gonna try to fix this uh, dent here in the corner. It's gonna be pretty tricky because it's creased over pretty hard. Um, on the inside, we're gonna be removing the dash uh, taking the seat out of the truck so we can reupholster it with a kit from Holly Classic Trucks. We're putting a new rubber mat in this truck because it's a work truck and we're gonna be doing some under carpet light as well as some boom mat from our friends over at Design Engineering Incorporated because we need it to be nice and comfortable in here for when Moby is riding along. Uh, this truck is actually gonna have air conditioning as well so that's gonna be going underneath the dash on that side. I found a kit I think I like so Plenty of work to do and not a whole lot of time to do it in, but we'll get it done. We always do. I got everything loose on the core support, so in theory, I should be able to take this all off in one piece. Um, we'll see how I did. Oh, still in cool one. Now with the core support out of the way, it's a whole lot easier to get in here and work on pulling the engine. But I'm gonna save that for another night cause it's about midnight in here. So gonna probably pull this out tomorrow. What do you think, bud? Is it time to go to bed? Boop. Got the C20 up in the air, doing a little bit of work underneath to get ready to pull the engine. I'm gonna use a Sawzall and cut the exhaust off of both sides and cut the exhaust into various different chunks to get it out from underneath this truck. And then uh, I'll be taking loose the transmission, the drive shaft, uh, clutch linkage that's up in there, and then we'll be pulling the motor out because pretty much everything up top is disconnected and ready to go. So, gonna work on getting this exhaust cut off and get it out of here. the exhaust is out of the way now it's time to uh, pull the transmission uh, mount and hopefully yank this engine out of here Whew. I'm sweating so I'm in here working on removing the uh, doghouse for the transmission so this whole center section of the uh, floor actually comes out on these old trucks um, I had to look up on the internet how to take off the shifter because I've never actually worked on an SM 465 and it looks pretty complicated looking at it. It doesn't look like there's any way to take this off or maybe you use one of these holes, but it's not that. It's, uh, it's actually much simpler. You push down on this collar right here, turn it about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch, and then the whole thing just slides out the top. How trick is that? So it's way easier to remove than one might expect. So now I can drop the engine and transmission and not have to worry about the shifter being in the way. Pretty cool. He's removing the doghouse. <laughs> Are you happy about that? Probably not. Now's the time where we find out if I did indeed get everything disconnected or if we're gonna find the tensile strength of whatever is left holding in this motor with the almighty Chinese engine hoist. So we've got our load leveler put in here because it's kind of actually a tight fit getting this engine and transmission out of this truck. But we're gonna hook this thing up, see if it'll come out of there. 
and Moby's just chilling in the truck. He's gonna make sure everything's fine inside. Yes, this motor's gonna now escape the surly bonds of this C20 and soar to new heights. <laughs> Quoting Ronald Reagan over here, apparently. Yeah, very philosophical moment. So we're gonna get this thing yanked out and uh, hope it all goes smoothly. So probably gonna put you guys on a time lapse because it's probably gonna take more than just 10 seconds to come out of there. I think. separating the engine from the bell housing after 40 years. This thing is quite a chunk. It is a uh, four speed with a granny. It is a uh, SM465 and uh, it's pretty beefy. It's got about 110,000 miles on it. It's good for a whole lot more. Oh, separated one, one more. right away. We're at Look how easy that separated. We didn't even have to pry on it. Well, there you go. The SM465 is separate from the small block. It fought us a little bit, but we got it apart. And if you've never seen one of these Granny Gear four speeds out of the vehicle, they're actually pretty large. I mean, I have decent sized hands and this transmission is just chunky. But yeah, there we go. It's out. So now we get to clean up all this junk that's in here. Pressure wash everything get it ready for the LS to go in. Whew, lots of work done, but still lots of work left to do. I feel like this truck whooped my butt today. All right, so it's another day working on the truck. Me and Nathan are here tearing apart the C20. He's doing a little bit of work on Dave's F100. And yeah, this is what the C20 looks like now. So last time we saw it, we were pulling the engine out. It's still sitting over there. I need to find somebody to buy it or just haul it to the scrapyard. Don't know yet, um, we'll see. But I guess I haven't introduced Nathan yet. Nathan is uh, here helping me in the shop from time to time. So doing some part-time work. He's doing all the work I really don't wanna do. Wire wheeling stuff, cleaning it up, painting it. But I'm also gonna teach him some stuff about LS swaps and fixing up these classic cars. So kinda, He's doing what I used to do. I used to sweep shop floors. Now he gets to sweep my floors instead of me having to do it. Although, let's be real, I'm still going to sweep a lot because I like keeping it clean in here. But anyway, we're getting this taken apart. As you can see, it looks a little different than last time you saw it. Uh, we've already got a lot of the interior stripped. I figured I should update you before I have it completely taken apart because it's changed a little since you've last seen it. So I got this door off already. The seat is out. We've got all the old rubber mat out as well as the juke that went underneath it. Um, there's a little bit of rust in this floor. You can see a little bit of daylight. So I think I'm just gonna patch in a panel here. The rockers do have a little rust, but I think I'm just gonna put some POR 15 over it and let it stay that way because stuff doesn't really rust that much here in Georgia. A um, little bit of rust there. Again, this is just gonna be a work truck, not a show truck. So I don't care that much. Uh, that side's actually pretty decent. It's nice to be able to take off that little like transmission tunnel cover to be able to work on the transmission and stuff. So yeah, it's getting there. Still gotta pull the dash apart and all the wiring out of it so that we can make room for our painless wiring harness. Our Regal all-terrain has gone flat. So clearly should have put the one that goes flat on the side that I did the burnout with, but hindsight is uh, 2020, right? But anyway. We're uh, getting this tore apart. I'm about to take this last door off and get it out of the way, but I figured I should film and show you guys exactly what's going on. 
At this point, I should almost just pull the cab off, but I don't think I'm gonna do that because this was not meant to get this far, but it kind of snowballed like it always does. So now we can do some nice work here on the interior, get everything cleaned up and painted and put some boom mat down to keep it nice and quiet in here. We're gonna end up using some heat shield from DEI on the firewall to heat the heat down inside the cab uh, because it's gonna be hot on power tour and we want our air conditioning to actually have a fighting chance. So it's gonna be nice and cleaned up. Gonna be using the blackout rust preventative on the frame from our friends over at the Sweet Patina and it's all gonna work. So now that it's to this point, I'm gonna finish stripping down what I'm gonna take off and then this thing's gonna get loaded up on the car hauler and we're gonna take it to the coin op car wash and go clean it up. Over here is our collection of parts. That's the front end off the Camaro. We got the hood off of the F100, and then all of this is C20 goodness. So trying to keep it fairly organized so that the shop isn't a total disaster like it is over here. Yeah, this truck has exploded all over the shop. But, but I'm gonna get the rest of the dash apart, and uh, hopefully there's no more surprises. And yeah, I have some baby birds in the shop chirping away. There's one on top of the bed over there, and there's a nest on top of that four barrel carburetor. So, yeah. I guess I'll show you the baby birds before they are grown up and gone, because they've been moving around the shop today. Ooh, I even have the ladder here, perfect. See that? Little baby birds. And then there's their brother. Being a spaz. <laughs> Oh goodness, guess it's afraid of me. But anyway, I'm gonna get this truck the rest of the way apart, get the rear wheels back on it, and then I'm gonna be taking it, loading it on the trailer, and run into a coin op car wash and cleaning this thing as best I can before we uh, do any more work. So it's gonna allow me to get in here and clean all of this junk, which will be a big improvement. I got the truck completely stripped down. So there is no wiring or dash or carpet or anything left inside of it. The only thing left is the steering and the brakes essentially. So we're gonna take it to the car wash and uh, get it cleaned up. So the fine folks over at Super Clean sent me a bunch of their degreaser to try out. So they have this aerosol version as well as just the OG Super Clean. And they even have a foaming super clean so this is some pretty heavy duty degreaser and this truck definitely needs it i scraped a little bit of the grease off of this cross member but it is definitely pretty gross 40 years of grime and dirt and grease leaking out of that old small block me and sophia she helped me load it on the trailer we're going to take it to the car wash and get it cleaned up because i don't have a pressure washer here handy and i really don't want to make a mess in my driveway even if i did so we'll go use some degreaser at a car wash. And uh, the frame should be a lot nicer when we're done. Yeah, it needs some love. All right, here we go. All right, we made it to the local coin op car wash. Gonna try out the foaming stuff, see how it functions. This truck is super dirty, so uh, it definitely needs some attention from some degreaser. This is really where it's bad right here from that old leaky small block. So we'll let this sit on here for a few minutes and then uh, try to blast it off with the pressure washer. So we've been using the original and the foaming stuff on here. We haven't even used any water yet. You can already see it turning brown, and just taking all the gunk off. So I'm gonna let it sit on here for a minute or two, put some coins in there and uh, see how clean this gets 
pretty quickly. And I am gonna wear safety glasses because I'm sure I'm gonna blast myself in the face. And I really don't want any of this in my eyes. So yeah, I think it's working pretty good though. Oh, that's interesting. That's a whole nother level of foam action. Huh, I feel like that's really good for doing big areas. Hmm. Kind of reminds me of tire foam, but it's a uh, degreaser instead. Yeah, all right. Well, now that that's sitting on there for a couple minutes, uh, we're gonna break out the pressure washer and see how clean we can get this. So I figure now that I've hit it with all the degreaser, I'll actually use the foam brush and scrub it a little bit. And I think those two things together are gonna get this truck pretty clean. It's a little inconvenient uh, having the truck on a trailer, but at the same time, you can just crawl all over it. So it works. super clean degreaser on here and let me tell you what this was super greasy I don't know if you can hear that it's actually squeaky clean now see you hear that squeaky clean there is no grease on this firewall at all anymore um, I cleaned the inside as well not the perfection but pretty good did the whole back of the frame and uh, it's gonna be a lot nicer to work on now still need some detailing uh, but We'll wire wheel it and put the sweet patina blackout rust preventative on it. It'll be good to go. So it was definitely weird using a pressure washer on the inside of the truck, but there isn't really anything in here to hurt. The only thing left that we're gonna be reusing is the steering column and the pedals. So everything else is going away, but definitely a lot cleaner than it was. This was caked in grease. Now you can see it's pretty much bare metal. A little bit of dirt left, but overall, really can't complain with how that stuff worked so if you're looking for some degreaser products check out super clean i highly recommend it this stuff is awesome so now we're going to get this back to the shop and uh unload it and get back to work i drug the service bed out from behind the shop uh it's been sitting on this janky old trailer we had and uh we got to start getting this thing cleaned up and ready for paint so one thing i really like about this is this is the way all the doors lock so you pull that out and that allows you to actually open the doors so it has these little catches in here so you only need one padlock rather than a key for each individual door there's tons of storage in here i think i'm going to add at least one shelf in this cabinet um clearly it needs cleaned up lost nest and dirt and all that good stuff uh we're going to be painting it white instead of this minty green color that it is but I really like this service bed as a whole. Tons of very useful storage. Um, we're going to be putting some LED lights inside of every cabinet. Uh, this is probably my favorite cabinet because it's got these drawers. 
that you can pull out and that's gonna allow me to organize tool sets inside these individual things and you can actually move these trays around which is pretty killer. So that's gonna come in super handy. There's two of those in place. It looks like there used to be drawers here, um, but they are missing. So I'll probably just end up using those to uh, roll some floor jacks into so that they're locked in place. Uh, we got plenty of room for all kinds of good stuff. Um, we're gonna be sticker in the bed up with all of our sponsors. So we, we're gonna have Holly Performance on it, painless wiring, auto metal direct, Design Engineering Incorporated, uh, my friends over at the Sweet Patina. It's gonna be really loaded down with sponsors because there's so many good people helping with this build. I gotta fix a couple dents here in the back. So this bumper is dented right here. I'm either gonna have to cut it out and weld in a new piece or uh, there's some pretty beefy structure in here. I might be able to put a bottle jack in there and get it straightened out. We're gonna be changing the uh, tail lights. Uh, these little ones are going to go away and I'm going to put a bigger kind of rectangle shaped one that has tail light, turn signal, and reverse light. Uh, instead of these little, you know, bulb style reverse lights, we're going to put some work lights on there. I got to straighten out my tailgate, uh, cause it's going to need to be straight and smooth for stickers as well. It has a pintle hitch on it. I kind of want to put a regular ball style hitch on it. We'll see how that works. Definitely got to clean out the inside of this bed. I think those cabinets are from another bed, not this bed, because they don't seem to match going anywhere. But this bed should be pretty killer. It's a Holen truck mounted power equipment and bodies uh, from Griffin, Georgia. It was made in June of 1988 in Griffin, Georgia. So it's pretty cool. Um, I think it was a phone bed truck for a while. From what somebody said, it would have had a rack that mounted on it. You can see where it used to bolt on both sides as well as on the front. This would have been gas storage. So it's got a vent in it to let uh, air flow in and out of it. So it would have had like helium and something else, I think the guy said. I don't know what we're gonna use it for. I might actually store welding gas bottles in there. We'll see. Lots of room though. It's gonna be a pretty killer bed when we're done. Uh, get it cleaned up and painted and get it on the back of the truck. Should be pretty cool. So there's a quick tour of the bed for you guys. And uh, that's what's gonna be replacing the bed we just took off. I got the C20 wheeled outside today because I'm cleaning up the frame just a little bit more. Uh, I had some dirt and grease to get off in a couple spots and I need to remove a couple more brackets. So I'm working on that. Moby's hanging out as always. And I'm getting this cleaned up because a very important package showed up today. My friend Blake over at Sweet Patina hooked me up with a bunch of his detailing supplies. And not only the detailing supplies, man, he sent stickers, koozies, air fresheners, even a t-shirt and a hat. So this is why i'm cleaning the frame up because he just released this new stuff called blackout rust preventative uh it's kind of a similar product if you're familiar with por 15. um so i'm going to be using this on the chassis and the floors and stuff anywhere that there has been rust to uh keep the rust from coming back and to make it look a whole lot better than it does right now so we're going to be using that on the frame the patina sauce is going to be used on the hood uh, where there's a bunch of patina and then the polish is going to be used on the entire truck to uh, bring the shine back. So the Century Polish, the patina sauce, and the Blackout Rust Preventative are going to make this truck look so much better. But he also sent over some of his TKO hand wipes. These are awesome if you don't have a sink handy or if you're just on the side of the road, you can clean your hands no matter how dirty they get. And then obviously we have a bunch of his detailing products, anything from glass cleaner to interior to car wash soap, to tire shine, and all-purpose cleaner. Blake definitely hooked it up. And if you're looking for some detailing supplies, I highly recommend these guys, not just because they sent me a bunch of products, but because it's a great family-owned company out of Texas, and all the money that they raise doing their fundraisers and stuff goes to support ALS research. And if you don't know anything about ALS, it's a horrible disease, and there's no cure for it currently. So. 
we definitely need to find one. So check out these guys at the Sweet Patina. They make awesome stuff. And I'm super excited to use this, this, and this on the truck. And of course the other products once I actually have it put together enough to need detailed. But anyway, back to work. I'm gonna get cleaning up this frame, roll it back here in the shop and start painting. Well, we got the C20 back on the lift and now it's time to start cleaning up the frame all the way back. So front, underneath the cab and everything under the bed. So we're using this awesome new product from the Sweet Patina. It's called Blackout Rust Preventative. And if you've ever used anything like POR15, this is a pretty similar product. Uh, it's described as permanently obliterates annihilates and terminates rust and i'd say that's very true about this type of product if you put it on something you are never going to get it off so definitely be careful with it wear gloves because if you get it on your skin basically your skin has to come off and before it comes off and use an old paintbrush you don't care about because you're better off just throwing the paintbrush out afterwards so we're going to use this on the entire front of the frame uh, as well as underneath in the back. And all you have to do is brush it on and it lays down super smooth. So here's a little before action. I still need to do a little bit of vacuuming because there's some dirt I need to get out. But I cleaned this really well with a degreaser and wire brushed it. So it's pretty much ready for this stuff to go on. And uh, I don't think I'm actually gonna do the control arms. I think I'm just gonna spray them with a spray can because they're going to be replaced later. So I don't wanna use good paint on the part that I'm just gonna change out later. Uh, probably gonna have an after power tour because the new stuff isn't gonna be done. Uh, in theory, there should be a new product coming out for the three quarter ton pickups uh, rather than just the C10s. So stay tuned for that, but I'm gonna get to work on this. Uh, so I guess it's time to cut to the time lapse. So next time you see me, in theory, this will be painted and maybe I'll look a little different because I probably will have some on my face. It's kind of how it goes. Just like that, the entire front end has been painted. I did the top, the inside, the outside, and the bottom of the frame rails all the way back. Did the entire cross member top and bottom. This little cross member right here, including my proportioning valve, the A-arms and stuff, like I said, I fogged with a spray can. But I did every bit of the cross member that I could reach. Uh, whenever I change the suspension out in the future, I'll be sure to get down in there and everything but I did my steering box. I even did my brake booster. So this stuff goes on super nice. You just brush it on. It lays down nice and smooth when it dries. And so far I've done basically to the firewall. Now I'm gonna move around back and start on what's back here. So you can see what it used to look like versus what it looks like now. This is what the front used to look like. So now I'm moving back here and using it on the rest. So. There's how little I have used. I'm only used about, I don't know, three quarter of an inch out of that quart. And uh, that means there's plenty left to do the rest of this thing. So I'm gonna be doing the rear end, the leaf springs, the frame, and uh, then I'll be doing under the cab once I get the truck way up in the air. So we're making some progress and that's what counts. So cut to another time lapse.
All right, well, it's a new day here in the shop. I stayed up pretty late doing the coating on this chassis. I got the entire front done, almost all of the back. I still need to do a little bit on the axle. Uh, I still need to do under the cab, but I'm gonna let this sit for a minute and come back to it. And uh, let me show you what motor mounts and exhaust I'm gonna be using on this vehicle. So I have the Hooker Blackheart Deluxe engine mounts, which actually not only replace, you know, the standoff from your factory, you know, perches, but also replaces the perch. So you don't have to save your old ones. Uh, we're using the clamshell style mount, like what comes on the fourth gen F bodies and stuff with the Holly uh, polyurethane insert and obviously their motor mount bolts as well. So these mount to the frame and then these mount on the engine. And that's all it takes to bolt an LS into a square body is those mounts. And then we're using a cross member that's not actually a Holly component. There was a friend of mine here in Georgia who follows along with what we're doing. And he had a leftover Scorpion fabrication transmission mount. And Holly doesn't make a mount to support the old SM465. So as you can see, there is our SM465 made it to a mock-up 5.3. So we're gonna position this where we need it to keep that transmission instead of swapping to a T56 or like a 4L80. So huge thanks to that guy. His uh, Instagram is like Square Addict 86 or something. So yeah, these mounts in conjunction with that cross member is gonna work super well. And then we're using the hooker cast manifolds uh, that are ceramic coated instead of doing a header because I really don't want exhaust leaks in this truck and we're not looking for big horsepower numbers. We're just looking for usability and practicality. So those are gonna work nicely. So I'm gonna get all this mocked up uh, in the chassis tonight now that I got it all finished up. So we're gonna get the wheels and tires on it, get this thing back on the ground and uh, mock up the engine and transmission again to see how things are gonna work. Yeah, whew, I'm out of breath from saying all that. Time to get to work. Yeah. Well, look who decided to show up at the shop for once. Yeah, hey, you know what today is? It's May the 5th. Cinco de Mayo? Yeah, Cinco de Mayo. May the 5th be with you. Oh. Yeah. No, that's all wrong. It's supposed to be May the 4th be with you, and then you get to party on Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> so we've got the clamshell mounts with the Holly polyurethane insert on the block. And uh, I kind of want to see how everything's going to sit. And then I'm going to toss a set of heads that I have sitting over there on here and then hook up the exhaust manifold to see where it exits in relation to the clutch linkage and everything. So I've got the uh, perches on the frame already. So we're going to get this thing tucked in there and see how it fits. And look at that transmission, man. That thing is a chunk. Yep. Pretty beefy. Yeah, it is. With dirt dumpers and that's included. But yeah, we're gonna slide this thing in there, see how it works. Push it, kick it, kick the So this is what happens when my dad comes over here and works. He puts on the motor mounts upside down. It happens. It happens. See, that's what it's supposed to look like. See a little tab on the top? Just so you know, in case you're using these mounts on your own engine, don't do what he just did. That's right, learn from my mistakes. Experience <laughs> is the best teacher, but it doesn't have to. These holes need to be wallered out a little bit. Yeah, that's a Southern term right there, wallered out. Uh, they're a little tight, so we need to open them up a touch to make them fit on the block a little better. So, 
Anyway, he's gonna work on that and then we'll get the engine slid into place and figure out our trans cross member and where the exhaust manifolds are gonna land and all that good stuff. All right, let's try that again. Oh. Don't get squashed by that transmission, Jim. I'm not gonna get squashed by it. Aren't you thinking of trans ways? A lot. All right, start bringing it down the slow. I don't, I don't think so, man. All right, so we're encountering some interesting fitment with these motor mounts in this frame. And uh, there's a little bit of a gap underneath the top of the motor mount because the C20 frame is shorter height-wise. So from the top to the bottom, it's about half an inch different than a C10 frame. And I know that because there's a C10 square body in the yard and uh, we went out and measured. So these motor mounts are meant for a C10. So like I said, we got a gap there. We know that's where the motor's gonna sit. So we can mock everything up based on that. But this is definitely going to require a spacer underneath. Don't worry, we're not gonna use wood. It's just temporary for mock-up. I think um, we can use the wood. Yeah, you use yeah. wood for all kinds of stuff in cars that you shouldn't. He's more of a, a home remodeler than a car builder. Yeah. So he kind of- They used to use wood on cars a lot more. Yeah, back in like the 20s and 30s. Well, that's about my era. No, you were born <laughs> in 63. But anyway, uh, we're getting it figured out. So it fought us a good bit going in there because we didn't know this gap was gonna end up there. So anyway, now that we got that done, we're gonna take the engine hoist off, put the heads on, and uh, test fit our exhaust manifolds and see how they're gonna work with everything we got going on. Getting it done. A little bit at a time. <laughs> All right, so we got the heads put on and the exhaust manifolds mocked up and the stop clutch leakage, which you can't see down in there, is definitely gonna be an issue. So I don't know if we're gonna modify the Z bar or if we're gonna do a hydraulic conversion. Um, that's something we'll have to figure out. We're gonna take some time, think on it, sleep on it. Yes. Uh, it definitely looks like the hydraulic conversion parts that I ordered are not gonna work because I kind of anticipated this being a problem. Uh, so I'm gonna have to send those back. And then I'm gonna try to mess with that Z bar a little bit and see if I can make it function. But I might be doing an internal slave cylinder inside of the bell housing. Yet to be determined, but the motor's sitting kind of where it's supposed to. It's got the exhaust manifolds on it. It's looking pretty good. Granted, this is a mock-up motor with mock-up heads. It's all junk, so it will look much nicer when it's finally going back together, because that looks we, terrible. We hope so. <laughs> yeah. These, though, these look great. Yes, they do. The rest of it, not so much. <laughs> but we're going to get things shuffled around and cleaned up. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, so we're going to pull all the vehicles into the shop, including the service bed. I think we could fit it all. It's going to be a tight squeeze, but I need to paint that thing, and so I don't want it soaking wet, so I can't paint it. Good to have extra space. Yep, it helps a lot.